Okay, so we can start with the session. Good afternoon to all the participants of the webinar and a very good afternoon to our guest speakers. I welcome you all in today's webinar on the topic and initiative on skill activities in chemical sector. I'm Deepmala Mojani, Senior Manager, Industry Engagements, moderator for the session. Today in our session, we have invited guest members from most reputed industry and from the very renowned Chemical Industry Association. They can give us an insight on the skill-based training gaps and opportunities to fill this gap. Also, the career pathway that post-skill-based training can be given by the manufacturing units of the chemical industries. To take the discussion ahead, I would like to invite Dr. Ashita Tripathi from Rubber Chemical and Petrochemical Skill Development Council. Dr. Ashita Tripathi is heading the Training and Content Division of RCPSD. She is PhD in botany. She has been associated with RCPSTC from last 1.5 years of experience with us now. She is leading the content development, including the development of standards and training material, both for print and digital media. She is also heading the training department. Crisis breaking it. Dr. Ashita. Very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope I am audible. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, very good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Ashita Tripathi, and uh, uh, I welcome you all on this webinar on behalf of RCPSDC. Uh, this webinar is all about uh, talk. Uh, we, uh, to know more about the skill ecosystem, uh, RCPSDC Rubber Chemical Petrochemical Skill Development Council has already been working uh, for skill-based training pan India for rubber and petrochemical sector. Chemical sector is little new for us, so uh, this this uh, this entire webinar is focused towards uh, uh, you know spreading awareness about the skill-based training that that is being conducted by RCPSDC throughout the country and how we can collaborate as uh, you know, industry partners with the uh, you know, chemical industry and take this forward as they take this mission forward and uh, help the industry benefit out of the various schemes and projects that are already available with the government of India. So I'll quickly uh, give a brief about the organization and the skill ecosystem that exists in our country for all those who might not be uh, you know, much uh, aware of it. So uh, I'll, I'll share my screen. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, Ashita, it's not visible. Okay. So uh, RCPSDC, as we call it, uh, is actually Rubber Chemical and Petrochemical Skill Development Council promoted, promoted by uh, ATMA, AIRIA, and uh, works under the ages of NSDC, National Skill Development Corporation for Skill India Mission. We have uh, you know, uh, been established by uh, MSDE, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, and we are one of the pioneer uh, SSCs that, uh, that was established in the year uh, 2012. The ministry uh, uh, runs uh, the coordination of skill development efforts across the country and uh, manages to fill the gap between the demand and supply of skilled manpower, building vocational framework and uh, you know, with the aim of making uh, India a skill capital of the world. The ministry aims to skill on a large scale with speed and high standards. It is aided in these initiatives by its functional arms, that is NSDC, National Skill Development Corporation, and uh, you know uh, there are different uh, SSEs that are established for uh, each industry. Then uh, rubber chemical and petrochemical is a sector skill council which deals with uh, skill based trainings and skill based programs for rubber industry, chemical industry, and petrochemical industry. Then we uh, were uh, erstwhile called as RSDC, Rubber Skill Development Con uh, Council, which was constituted in 2012 under the ages of NSDC and promoted by ATM. It is all 
uh, you know, uh, Automotive Tire Manufacturers Association and All India Rubber Industries Association under the ages of MSDE. The, the objective of uh, forming the SSC was to identify and fulfill skill development needs in the rubber sector. It is, uh, the, the organization is managed by the governing council, which includes members from ATMA, AIRIA, Rubber Board of India, IRI, that is Indian Rubber Institute, then uh, Indian Cycle Rickshaw Tire Manufacturers Association, Indian Rubber Manufacturers Research Association. This was the initial uh, when uh, it was only RSDC. Now uh, we have presence uh, throughout the country. Uh, we have regional offices based at Mumbai, Delhi, Agartala, Chandigarh, Chennai, and Kottayam to take care of different regions of the, of the country and ensure that we reach to every small uh, district and ensure that the skill-based program reaches to all the uh, important stakeholders throughout the country. So to give a brief about uh, the uh, sectors uh, that we covered, the, uh, the, the, the reach, the outreach of the uh, SSE, we they deal with uh, rubber and CPC vertical. Uh, rubber is the uh, rubber sector, rubber industry, which is further segregated into three subsectors, that is consumption, manufacturing, and production. And the third one is tire services and maintenance. Under production, there comes natural rubber and synthetic rubber. And under consumption, there comes tire segment and non-tire segment. Then services and maintenance includes tire services sector. CPC is chemical and petrochemical vertical, uh, which has majorly two, uh, uh, two sectors, I would say. One is chemical and the other is petrochemical or plastic, plastic processing, basically. So this CPC vertical is newly added. Uh, this, uh, uh, this vertical, entire vertical was uh, been given to us uh, in the year 2019. And, uh, from then onwards, we have been started to uh, you know, take uh, initiatives to start skill-based programs in these sectors also. And this is how we are here today uh, to uh, basically reach out to chemical industry. Then uh, the, the main objective of uh, a sector skill council is to conduct uh, training programs throughout the country. The training programs can be of two types, uh, fresh skilling uh, training programs and uh, training programs for upskilling or reskilling of the existing workforce that is called RPL. So the fresh skilling uh, is, is the training program where uh, the fresh candidates who want to enter into the sector, who want uh, who are looking for jobs, who want to enter into the industry, maybe any, any of the industry, rubber chemical or petrochemical, they are looking to earn a livelihood for their uh, better future. They come and take skill-based programs, training programs under our qualification. And uh, the, the, the training program is majorly from 200 to 500 hours duration, depending upon the NSPF level of that uh, job role. These training programs uh, uh, can be of all the three sectors and are uh, you know, conducted throughout the country. Then the second one is the reskilling or upskilling of the existing workforce, which is called recognition of prior learning. All, all the individuals who are already working in the industry uh, on a certain profile, they are given a short training uh, of 12 hours duration, 12 to 80 hours duration, depending upon the course. And uh, then they are certified, assessed and certified, and uh, which, which leads to their appraisals, their uh, promotions, uh, their you know, uh, better uh, match of their skill sets with the uh, current uh, job requirement. Then training delivery methodology includes uh, curriculum designing, aligning the curriculum with the current industry standards or practices, then course delivery through theory sessions supplemented with practical sessions and internships. We, as, uh, as an SSC, we emphasize on industry involvement throughout uh, the you know, training program, right from the inception, that is a development of the qualification through curriculum development, training content development, then conducting training of trainers, training of assessors, Every, at every stage of the training program is uh, industry involved and uh, you know, taken into consideration. Their inputs are uh, taken into consideration and keep as, are used as a stepping stone towards running these programs because they are the ultimate end users and beneficiaries of this entire ecosystem. Then uh, again, here uh, we would like to mention that uh, the industry is uh, involved, engaged in every step uh, that we follow in this initiative, right from the uh, inception, that is development of national occupational standards, then we conduct skill gap analysis, 
to identify the gap, the demand uh, of the uh, workforce, then content development, wherein we design the standards, we design the curriculum, we design uh, training material, uh, and uh, uh, the training material is both for print media, that is for book, uh, hard copies, and also we are also into development of digital print, digital media content uh, that we'll come on to later. So at every stage of content development also, we take inputs, we take feedback from the industry uh, experts. Then subject matter experts work very closely with us and keep guiding us for their uh, you know, uh, expert uh, advices. OJT and internships um, are also uh, areas where industry is uh, engaged. Training of trainers and assessors, of course, uh, industry uh, people only help us, guide us to conduct these sessions also. Placement and apprenticeship for uh, the beneficiaries. Then the services that we offer is uh, short-term training, which can be offline and online, bridge courses, which is upskilling and certification, the model training center, apprenticeship, campus engagement, that is STEP, and job portal, that is demand aggregation, where we, uh, you know, we ensure that all the candidates who are looking for job and the employers, employee, future employee and the employees, they come together and you know, connect with each other. So uh, uh, to, to give you a brief about what we have done so far, uh, what all have we uh, achieved so far uh, is this uh, a glance, uh, you know, uh, a viewer that uh, shows that we have developed already 116 national occupational standards, which includes, uh, you know, 50, uh, 54 national occupational standards for manufacturing sector and 32, which has come down to 26 now for national labor plantation sector post rationalization activity. Skill gap analysis conducted across uh, 21 states in manufacturing and plantation sector for rubber. Recently, we have also conducted a skill uh, gap analysis for plastic sector for five states of India. Then we have affiliated 75 plus training partners, 2.5 lakh plus training in manufacturing and plant job, plantation job roles. Our CPSDC has got 900 plus companies registered, 20,000 plus total opportunities created and 11,000 plus contracts signed under an apps program. Conducted training of trainers of uh, 2050 trainers, 1250 trainers, and 650 SSS so far, and the clock is still ticking. Content and handbook developed for more than 30 job roles. E content, e learning simulated content is being developed uh, for more than 15 job roles already. Uh, MOU signed with 20 states' governments along with uh, NBCFDC, uh, NSFTC, and uh, NSFFTC. Uh, then Bachelors of uh, Vocational Studies uh, in Rubber Technology is our very favorite program, which is being run in many colleges and universities of, of the country. Uh, and uh, dual certification along with uh, BWOC is also very popular among the school and college students. RCPSDC have dedicated job portal for job seekers and employers. So uh, uh, these are the main uh, areas, main activities that we conduct. Uh, we have pool of training and placement partners. We have uh, courses, training materials, assessors, and trainers uh, you know, uh, you know, enrolled with us, on board with us. We have industry partners and experts who constantly guide us throughout uh, the uh, you know, training uh, programs. And we have placement support uh, that, uh, through a placement portal. And also, I would like to mention add here that we have a dedicated placement team, uh, which uh, provides hand-to-hand uh, -hand support to the trainees, as well as also to the employers who are looking for uh, you know, fresh skilled candidates, because as uh, you must be aware, and we'll talk about it later also, that there is a huge gap between the demand and the supply. We all know in all the three sectors that we deal with, uh, rubber, chemical, and petrochemical, there's a huge gap of demand and supply. People want, industries want skilled people, trained people, and uh, we have so much of uh, youth available. If, you, if we consider at the demography of the country, then uh, by 2030, we'll be generating, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, one lakh uh, million youth. So that number uh, has to be, you know, converted to become employable so that the industry gets benefited out of this youth. And this will ultimately decide uh, and help in, in uh, India becoming the uh, world power uh, in terms of, uh, you know, manpower, skilled manpower and skilled, uh, you know, capital of the nation of the world. So uh, now uh, I'll, I'll quickly give you a brief on what uh, major projects that we have dealt with. Uh, of course, I'll not be able to cover the long journey of 10 years that we have 
you know, uh, covered already uh, so far uh, since inception, but I'll, I'll just quickly brief about the major, major projects that we have done. So Samart is one of the most popular and most uh, successful uh, projects that we have uh, conducted, which, uh, which is actually the uh, mobile skill van, where a van fitted with all the equipments and all the machineries is, uh, you know, moved across the uh, 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 hubs of the tire fitters and provides training to the tire fitters uh, throughout the highways. And this project has been very, very successful. It was inaugurated in 2018. And uh, since then, we have uh, trained more than one lakh tire fitters throughout the country. So this uh, was uh, inaugurated by uh, the uh, minister. And uh, it was, uh, you know, very well taken up by most of the states of our country. So uh, moving on to the next uh, highlight of our SSC is uh, the online portal, the digital portal uh, that is called e Acharya, wherein uh, we conduct uh, training blended in a blended board uh, for uh, the different job roles. These are the 10 courses that are already uh, up and running on the portal. Uh, so the, the portal uh, gives you a complete thorough uh, theoretical and practical knowledge of each job role. Uh, for theoretical knowledge, we have covered lectures, we have covered uh, uh, you know, in-depth training of the audiovisual course, which explains the uh, working of the job role. And to cover the practical, we have incorporated uh, animated videos and uh, live shoot videos to give a real look and feel animated videos to explain the working of the machine uh, clearly and remotely sitting at the, uh, the comfort of their houses, the students or their you know, classrooms, they can you know, get to know the working of the machine in detail. And the live shoot video gives the real life look and feel to the candidate even before entering into the shop floor. So the candidate gets to see and know how the machine works through uh, these live videos and uh, animated videos. So this is the uh, the one-stop solution for uh, uh, learning and uh, skill-based learning for the candidates. And of course, this is followed by, this is a blended mold that we follow. And this, since it's a manufacturing, uh, you know, uh, sector, all the three sectors that we deal with are manufacturing. So uh, ultimately the candidate has to go to the shop floor and uh, use the machine. So that uh, also happens once the candidate completes the course through this uh, portal, then the candidate is taken for an OJT or, uh, you know, shop for to complete his remaining tra uh, practical training hours. So uh, uh, we are also, uh, you know, uh, into CSR projects. We have also uh, developed partnership for conducting CSR projects and partnership for skill development and capacity building of youth in the rubber chemical and petrochemical sectors and uh, to develop the uh, skill ecosystem and provide in, uh, infrastructure uh, and the uh, capacity building of the trainees of the youth that is already available uh, as per the demography of our country. Then uh, the, 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 uh, last, the main objective is to provide livelihood and employability enhancement of unemployed youth and also of migrant workers who have returned home due to COVID pandemic locally and to help CSR organizations in implementing skill development projects with regard to livelihood restoration of unemployed community members through employability enhancement and entrepreneurship promotion activities. So one of our most uh, popular uh, CSR project was pro uh, project Tire Care Wala, where we uh, you know, upskilled uh, you know, uh, tire uh, fitters only and uh, we conducted their training with practicals. So in the training, uh, training partner focused more on practical part by providing hands-on training and latest and uh, latest and uh, model uh, of tire repairing kit to each and every candidates. It was a three-day training. First two days were technical uh, teaching, technical practical hand-on training, and the third day was the assessment. Uh, so the training covers skilling on tire care, mounting and dismounting of all type of tires, repairing of tires, model and advanced tools and equipment and repairing and other soft skills required to manage their enterprises more efficiently. Uh, the, uh, the, the project was with Bridgestone and uh, we signed an uh, MOU with them for training of 500 tire fitters across the country. They have undergone three day training uh, followed by uh, certification and assessment and certification and successful students are upgraded uh, with the latest equipment and rebranding of their shops. The project is promoted by the name of Tire Care Wala. 
So this was a successful project that we have done in CSR. Then uh, moving on to the uh, placement part of uh, the uh, the placement side of this uh, skill based training programs, which is the key uh, key factor with, with uh, which uh, the industry is benefited. So we have a dedicated placement portal to support placement fleet of the industry. The portal is completely online, and here is the URL of the portal. Candidates across the country can apply directly for the opportunities created by the employers and opportunity to hire semi-skilled and skilled candidates for the job roles. So uh, job seekers and employers, they both can log into the portal and uh, get the benefit and support from us. Then uh, the RPL is the recognition of prior learning, which is a very, very important uh, scheme, which provides a certification for the uh, uh, for uh, existing workforce. So. Uh, in, in order to keep pace with the uh, growing uh, demand of the industry and in order to be uh, you know skilled continuously and to upskill yourself to reskill yourself and to learn uh, new skills in order to become uh, you know uh, uh, to come at a better scale at a larger scale in the organization uh, we, we need to come you know uh, continue to uh, provide reskilling and upskilling to the candidates to the workers to the existing workforce so so as they become uh, they continue to be, uh, you know, uh, productive uh, in their jobs. So the objective is to reach out to the large uncertified workforce across the country to direct partners with the industry. And the process uh, that uh, is uh, undertaken is training and certification of the candidates working with the industry. RCPSDC supports in conducting training of the candidates and managing the infra required for the assessment. On successful completion, the employees who are assessed will be awarded with a co-branded certificate from industry and RCPS. So uh, uh, NAPS is another uh, key uh, scheme of Government of India, which uh, helps the employers as well as the youth of the India. So under this uh, scheme, the focus is to promote apprenticeship training in the country by incentivizing employers uh, uh, who wish to engage apprentices and to fulfill the vision and mission of the country. The objective is to promote apprenticeship training and to increase engagement of apprentices in the country. The components uh, that are offered by uh, the government is reimbursement of the stipend and sharing of basic training cost. So uh, reimbursement happens uh, at the share of 25%. So government of India from, uh, you know, uh, uh, is willing to share, to reimburse 25% or up to uh, 1,500 of the prescribed uh, stipend payable to the apprentices per month to all employers engaging apprentices and uh, they also are willing to share the basic training cost with respect to pressure apprentices limited to 7500 per apprentice for a maximum duration of 500 hours or three months so uh, uh, these were few reforms that were suggested uh, to uh, incorporate the industry demand on the NAPS training program. So uh, uh, outdated and prescriptive apprentices quota not aligned with needs. Industry can engage apprentice with a brand of uh, band of 2.5% to 10% of its workforce. Then curriculum not in sync with new technologies and business landscape limited to ITI trades and manufacturing, cumbersome procedures and processes. Uh, MSME lacks in-house basic training setup and regulated regime and inspector that. So the reforms that were suggested uh, were introduction of optimal trades with the discretion to industry to design the course, then service sector and graduate candidates from STPs were brought in, automated processes, ease in hiring and reporting with a dedicated apprenticeship portal. And industry can outsource basic training and co collectively uh, undertake uh, the OJT and form from regulation to self-regulation. SSP CEOs are appointed as JAs. Uh, so uh, these were the reforms that were introduced uh, in order to overcome the uh, concerns of the industry based on this uh, program. So how can uh, the industry participate in the skill-based training programs? So uh, uh, one is upskilling and reskilling and certifying the existing workforce through the RPL scheme. Second is to share your future manpower requirement with uh, RCPSDC so that we can provide the uh, workforce according to your requirement. Register on NAPS portal and hire apprentice if you wish to. Adopt customized training model according to the need of the company. 
uh, you can support internships and placements uh, through different schemes and you can also provide technical support from the industry for constantly updating occupational standards as we already mentioned as i already mentioned that we have been uh, seeking inputs from the industry experts uh, to uh, guide us for the development of the occupational standards and this uh, uh, curriculum so that uh, the uh, training material is developed as per the industry demand as per the industry requirement so uh, yeah so for future you can reach out to us on these uh, you know coordinates and uh, as i informed as i explained uh, through this that uh, we have been uh, conducting so, uh, these uh, training programs for rubber and uh, uh, plastic sector and chemical sector being new we have initiated a development of content also for chem chemical sector and we have uh, also developed uh, naps programs for chemical sector but uh, uh, not many uh, industry partners are uh, you know maybe not aware of the different schemes and uh, uh, policies that the government uh, has come up with so uh, that is why we uh, we have we are conducting this uh, webinar here with two experts present over here who will guide us and who will help us uh, take uh, the initiated the skill based initiatives in the chemical sector particularly because rubber and uh, plastic are little rubber is so pretty old plastic is uh, you know also uh, geared up but we need to gear up for chemical sector and we need to take it uh, aggressively so that we can uh, fulfill and plug in the gap of the skilled manpower that the industry is facing and how how we can contribute we can uh, support the industry uh, for uh, this initiative is what our agenda our objective of this uh, webinar is so uh, thank you so much for your patient uh, hearing and if you have any questions regarding uh, any uh, topic that we have covered so far you can drop your questions in the q and a box and i would hand over the uh, you know conversation to our next uh, key speakers uh, uh, for further uh, guidance over to you deepmala thank you thank you dr ashwita for the detailed uh, information about the sector skill council and uh, taking the flagship programs of sector skill councils highlighted and also taking us uh, with the tour of the government based program that is rpn and naps and finally the placement support that we are providing to the industries thank you so much so uh, now moving ahead to take the lead on and start with a conversation regarding the topic uh, i would like to invite our first guest speaker uh, which is from indian chemical council mr d sodhi selvam So, Mr. D. Sodhi Selvam is a graduate in chemical engineering and MBA in marketing. He also holds a PG diploma in journalism and mass communication. He has more than three decades of corporate experience in senior management positions in India and abroad as well. Mr. Selvam has board level exposure in diverse businesses in the areas of petroleum and synthetic lubricants, petroleum fuels and specialities. industrial packaging leather chemicals refinery and oil field services logistics travel and vocation and engineering and projects mr selvam has served as executive director of indian oil corporation limited and was also a director on the various boards of large and reputed organizations presently mr selvam is serving as a director general of indian chemical council the industry organization representing 189 million us dollars chemical and petrochemical industry in india so my warm welcome mr sodhi in the session today ah uh, thank you uh, dipala i hope i am audible yes sir definitely good evening good evening and greetings to everyone dr ashish dipati mr ajay chobe uh and distinguished participants i see in the participants list a few very distinguished names like mr stalin i don't know probably will be of uh, great help for uh the rcpsdc itself in fact he is spearheading our uh, chemical skills development center at chennai who has done a marvelous job of of, of training chemical engineers fresh as well as um, uh experienced people in the industry as well Uh, i am glad he is there along with uh, i i also uh, see quite a few interesting uh, participation 
Uh, really thank you for the opportunity. I would, I would say let me thank uh, the organizers for the opportunity given to me to share my views on their skill activities in the chemical and petrochemical sector. As uh, Deepmal has said, I represent the uh, Indian Chemical Council, which in turn represents the chemical and petrochemical industry in India. Uh, ICC is the apex national body uh, representing the USD 187 billion petrochemical and chemical industry. ICC is also a full member of uh, the International Council of Chemical Associations based in US and is spearheading many important initiatives such as Responsible Care, NICER Globe, Chemical Weapons Convention Help Days. We disseminate knowledge on cutting edge technologies, run series of programs, we are into training and we organize many uh, big symposiums and exhibitions for the benefit of the industry at large. On the subject of skilling, let me share uh, some of my basic few points. Education and skill are two sides of the same coin. However, it's necessary to appreciate that education is something that is just knowledge based matter. Education is making one able to understand all concepts. Being educated is the educational qualification one possesses, be it a chemical engineering or a diploma in chemical engineering, an ITA certification on a particular subject. It is just a passport for entry into an industry. That's it. Nothing more. But the skills are the qualities that a person will gain after training. Where knowledge is similar to theory, skill is similar to practical. Being skilled is the hands-on experience of a particular task. We have a large number of graduate engineers, diploma engineers, and ITA trained people. But if, if you ask ourselves a question, are they industry ready? The answer is sadly no. Most of them hold degrees and diplomas and certificates, but definitely are not industry ready. That's where I think skill development comes in the picture. To take uh, large corporations, large fertilizer companies, large refining companies, you know, they have the, uh, you know, the, they can invest a lot of money, time on the uh, people when they're inducted as uh, trainees. They can put them on training for a longer period, maybe one year, two year, on various areas and then train them. That's possible in large organizations and maybe in some multinational companies. But it's not practically possible in every organization, especially in the uh, small and medium scale industry, which forms a chunk of the industrial sector in India, more specifically the chemical and petrochemical industry. Even in the chemical and petrochemical industry, the small and medium scale industries are quite large in numbers. It is with this objective of making workforce industry ready, the Skill India Initiative, which was described recently, I mean, which was de described by Dr. Ashrita, uh, has been launched to empower the youth of the country with skill sets which make them more employable and more productive in their work environment. India, you know, we all talk about the demographic, demographic dividend. It's a country with 65% of its youth in the working age group. If ever there is a way to reap this demographic advantage, it has to be through skill development of the youth. So that, so that they add not only to their personal growth, but to the country's economic growth as well. And I'll just before I uh, give my views on the uh, skilling uh, requirements, let me give an idea about the chemical and petrochemical industry. Uh, very interestingly, we have joined uh, you know, a um, large size industry of uh, size about 187 billion. Is joining the rubber skill uh, in, you know, uh, initiative, basically. The rubber uh, skilling, the, the skilling in the rubber industry has probably taken, as explained by Dr. Ashrita, in a much bigger way. A lot, lot of work has been done. So we have just joined them. Uh, in creating various initiatives for skilling the uh, uh, workforce at various levels of the chemical and petrochemical industry. The uh, size of the uh, chemical and petrochemical industry in India is about 187 billion US dollars and it's growing in a very, very, very big way. Uh, again, the demographic dividends, headroom for growth, a lot of uh, scope for increasing exports because of uh, China issues, etc. This industry is bound to grow in a very big way and is uh, expected to reach level of 300 billion in the year 2025. Not in the next few years, we are expected to touch this. 
the interesting part of this industry is is very highly fragmented and diversified there are 80000 products which touch every part of one's life i don't think any industry you know will have so many numbers of products 80000 products and the industry ranks 6th in the world and 4th in asia only in chemical sales uh coming to the employment it employs uh, around 2 million people there are a lot of uh, you know um, uh, other uh, important attributes which i am not going to touch upon the point which i am trying to drive main is that uh, this industry is bound to grow we at this point of time even though the size is 187 billion we are only contributing to 3% of the global chemical sales china is the leader so there is a large of large head room for growth within within india as well as exports and this industry will grow in a very big way it's expected to grow in a big way because a lot of favorable factors this industry can be understood in many ways one broader way of segmenting this industry is bulk chemicals specialty chemicals petrochemicals agrochemicals and fertilizers and pharma and others of which bulk is about 25% specialty is 21% petrochemical is 19% this is one way of looking at this industry the other way of looking at the industry is by segmenting as per the hs codes chapters if you see the export statistics or import statistics the products are classified as per hs codes chapter 28 talks about inorganic chemical chapter 29 start, talks about organic chemicals like that the classification can be done that's the other way of looking at the chemical and petrochemical industry the third way of looking at this industry will be as per the type of products uh under different categories for example chemicals can be classified as alkali chemicals which is a bulk about 67% in india inorganic chemicals organic chemicals pesticides dyes and pigments i'm not of course touching the fertilizers and all that i'm just trying core chemicals and petrochemicals can be seen as synthetic fibers and yarn polymers synthetic rubber synthetic detergent intermediates performance plastics fiber intermediates olefins aromatics and other petrochemicals even though we can look at the industry in different ways whatever be the type of classification the skill requirement come in certain broad areas what are they basically production and operations maintenance engineering and projects quality control quality assurance and quality control they can be coupled together health safety environment this is a, a business where hse is of at most importance effluent treatment r and d packaging logistics including warehousing and finally the most important of course your sell your product sales and marketing and let's take some examples in production and operations the skills required are on the knowledge of production and processing of chemicals in the plant the operator should be trained to use the equipments various types of equipments are there he is to be trained to use the equipments installed in the plant he should have the knowledge of chemistry little bit of chemical engineering he should have the ability to look into the potential problems in the machinery and the process and the knowledge to keep records and derive inferences and results from the data collected i made it very simple it's not as simple as i said operating in the production and operation i'm just taking an example similarly if you take the other important uh, Uh, department of a uh, chemical industry is maintenance department they don't maintain the chemical plant will not run it will not operate the the maintenance department uh, you know should have the ability to maintain a wide array of production and processing related equipment and tools pressure vessels fired heaters piping system heat exchangers storage tanks pumps compressors right i mean you can keep on naming lot of equipments are there to be maintained likewise there are specific skills with regard to other areas as well but what one can find out is there are serious gaps between the requirement of the skills and the skills possessed at various functional levels now as i said earlier big companies they can afford to spend time maybe one year on the trainees one or two years on the trainees two years also in some cases put them on an on the job training specialized training all that is possible in large companies but that's not possible in medium and small industries so obviously what they look for is a ready made a skilled manpower whom they can recruit and directly put in the industry 
again if you see the uh, skill pyramid of the chemical industry basically majority 50% more than 50% are the bottom of the pyramid where they are supposed to know about the machinery and the technical inputs with minimal education requirement probably the uh, rc psdc is also focusing at this point of a time on the uh, lower side of the pyramid i think so because the, from the way i saw the presentation for the rubber also i think you have been concentrating on the bottom uh, of the pyramid as i mentioned uh, we along with the local associations in uh, it is chemical industries association and the manali uh, chemical association in chennai uh, we uh, already we have initiated a program targeted at engineers that is at a slightly higher level that is slightly even at a more than a supervisory level but we are now talking i understand we are talking about the bottom of the pyramid that is at the operator level so more than 50 for 50% of the industry is in this category and they require the basic skilling among the biggest challenges the industry faces are the availability of people with core skills in chemistry chemical engineers and managers with knowledge on specialty sectors so what i was explaining to you we addressed to some extent if not fully on the chemical engineers and managers part but we are not touched the, uh, the 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 bottom of the pyramid the uh, interesting thing what's happening in the last 15 20 years is the it sector takes away all the engineers whether you are a chemical engineer or a biochemical engineer any engineer they take away all the good engineers and uh, what is left out is very very less number and uh, that is being uh, taken by the uh, rest of the sectors uh, so the problem is they also want to get into such type of jobs even to uh, retain them as chemical engineers or in the field of chemistry and chemical is becoming extremely difficult because they also like to have a those days we used to call white collar job they want to have a white collar job under air conditioned you know uh, environment so there are quite a lot of challenges which emerge because of this and the skill requirements also keep on changing the lack of availability of infrastructural resources lack of adequate number of qualified human resources including faculty you know if you want to run a program you need good faculty so you need to identify that also inadequate efforts and research there are so many challenges this industry is facing at this point of time uh, going by our experience in southern region which focused on graduate engineers both fresh and new students even students we focused i feel the scope is very wide and uh, we are very confident that rubber chemical and petrochemical skill development council can play an important role in identifying the skill skill gaps and in designing the right skilling inputs which will help the industry now from the presentation which dr ashrita made i think they have uh, developed a lot of modules certification programs for uh, different types of uh, uh, skills and it's very necessary that you know they work in very close uh, uh, coordination with the chemical industry icc from our side we will try to help uh, rc psdc to the best of our ability but i think what is uh, most important is uh, they have to first identify the skill gaps at the different levels uh, because you know see it has to ultimately the skill gaps identified have to become very relevant for the industry otherwise uh, it will not be well appreciated so identifying the skill skill gaps at different levels becomes very important then designing skill development courses then you have to have a pool of experienced engineers with you to impart this otherwise uh, it's very difficult uh we see we are not you know see um, uh, we are going to uh, you know train people who are ready for the industry chemical industry petrochemical industry so to impart skill to them i think uh, we need i think uh, 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 the council the skill development council has to look for a pool i think they need to enroll a big pool of experienced engineers uh, very experienced there are a lot of people who are retired who are ready to render their services voluntarily also you need to i think enroll them in a big way i think that's very important even at the time of uh, designing your uh, skill development courses you know see when you develop and uh, you design a nice uh, development uh, skill development course which is relevant for the industry then it will become a big hit otherwise we will find it difficult to even you know sell those modules so after that i think we need to create a lot of awareness with respect to participation how do we reach the industry at large that's very important and finally you know your experts in managing the courses and then institutionalizing it also so i mean these are some of my points which i thought i should tell now if you you know for example you talked about the 
the uh, the apprenticeship scheme i work most of the time in public sector indian oil so i know what it is what is this apprenticeship scheme is all about so but how uh, effectively this scheme has been implemented in the private sector chemical and petrochemical industry is predominantly especially the chemical industry is predominantly a private sector focused industry it's a private sector industry basically whether they are aware of these schemes i would like uh, rcpsdc to in fact uh, come with a brochure or come with a you know uh, information material to tell the people in the chemical industry about the various government initiatives government schemes how they can be benefited that will definitely you know go a long way in spreading the message we from icc can definitely help you in disseminating this information now we have a large database our members may be around 400 but we have a much much bigger database to reach information so you can always share such information i am very confident that uh, rcpsdc can do a wonderful job and on behalf of icc let me assure you that we will provide full support towards emission of skilling the workforce at various levels of the chemical and petrochemical industry i request the participants uh, to have a free and frank exchange of ideas in this webinar on this very important subject of skilling and reskilling she talked about ashita talked about reskilling also about reskilling the workforce also so that tailor made solutions are designed by rcpsdc thank you so much and i take this opportunity to wish the program all the success thank you so much thank you so much this was really very well explained and in detail about the council about the sector skill council about the chemical council and that was really helpful for all the audience and i really appreciate uh, you have taken it so well so uh, our next speaker is from a large renowned manufacturing industry srf limited is a it's a chemical based multi business entity engaged in the manufacturing of industrial and specialty intermediates the company's diversified business portfolio covers fluorochemicals specialty chemicals packaging films technical textiles coated and laminated fabrics anchored by the strong workforce of 7000 employees from different nationality working across 11 manufacturing plants in india and one each in thailand south africa and hungary the company exports to more than 90 countries so we are uh, very happy and delighted to invite mr ajay chobe from srf limited mr chobe is a chemical engineering graduate from nit raipur he has overall 29 years of professional experience with chemical and man made fiber manufacturing industries he has been with srf limited for more than 26 years in its te technical textile business and has served as a manufacturing lead head in two of its plant location in chennai and thailand For last nine years, he has been handling business profiles of manufacturing quality, customer technical, process improvement, and TQM for four plant locations. He shares a wide perspective on customers, processes, and people capability aspects while working across various demographics. So currently, he is holding the forte as a vice president head of research and development. quality management and business excellence for technical textile business of sri so my warm welcome to sir in the session today yeah thank you dipala and thank you for giving this this opportunity and my warm greetings to uh, mr sodi selvam and all the participants thank you and uh, we will start with the questions with uh, sir and by the time uh, for the participants who wish to ask any question from the speaker they can write their questions in the q and a tab and we will try to ask the questions from the speaker during the webinar itself or in case of shortage of time we can also write uh, the answers to those questions through email but i request all the questions are welcome to be written in the question and a tabs so i start session with mr chobe Uh, sir, uh, SRF industry has been hiring the candidates under the NAPS program apprenticeship scheme. It's one of the most popular job role of RCPSTC from almost six months now, and uh, we would like to know about your own experience towards the scheme, the pattern of hiring the candidate as apprentices under the scheme. 
And since you have been utilizing the scheme for some time now, we would like to know the benefits that you think would be for the industries that has obtained out of the scheme. And what is your response will be really helpful for many industries who have been joining us today for the session and they are willing to take up the scheme might. So uh, thank you, Deepana. Uh, hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yeah. So regarding this question on, on the NAPS, so SRF has, has very keenly been uh, utilizing this uh, interest, uh, and apprenticeship promotion scheme. And post the government of India means the, the scheme was rolled, rolled, uh, rolled out by the government. And uh, the relaxation in engagement was given to the uh, uh, the percentage 10% or 15% of total manpower. So we have implemented uh, this scheme in our organization in uh, multiple units. And I, I believe that uh, several other organizations have also followed the same. And uh, with this, we are finding that uh, the demand has gone up uh, for fresh apprentices. And this is also resulting in some kind of scarcity where our plants are operating. So this is one of the experience uh, that the, the demand has gone quite high and we have been successfully utilizing. Um, another one is uh, we, uh, we are experiencing uh, that uh, in our manufacturing units, there are some issues related to attrition with NAPS, uh, but this is not a general one. It's, it's uh, specific to some demographies. We are facing this. Uh, then we also, uh, once we absorb the NAPS into our system, we have a structured onboarding process uh, wherein we uh, employ them into our, we have uh, demarcation for the core and peripheral production activities. And before putting them into the job, we are uh, passing them through a scaling program onboarding uh, process where the on the job training has been provided. And this actually ensures that the apprentices interests are there in acquiring the desired skills and sufficing our, uh, our requirements by uh, working in the processes. So this is regarding our experience on the availability part, the, the attrition, which is not so generic and the structured onboarding. And coming to the second part of uh, the question, which is the benefits we have uh, got out of the scheme uh, is I would say in, in the digital era, which is uh, post pandemic and then the new normals which have been set in. So there is always the requirement that uh, uh, we should have some kind of uh, uh, plug and play kind of skills should be available so, so that they can come and serve the industry purpose. So this apprenticeship program is providing an opportunity uh, for us to enroll them and skill them. And during the apprenticeship program duration, the candidates are also getting the opportunity to work and experience in real time environment. And that is also uh, uh, working is for a sufficient period of time, which is about three years. And that is uh, uh, helping the uh, apprentices also to learn in that scheme. So this is about the availability part. Uh, the benefit uh, has been there. Another one is with the introduction of TPA uh, with NAP scheme. Uh, so the hassles which are there in, the, in case of hiring, registration, training and assessment, enrolling. So these things have been which used to consume a lot of our efforts, resources and energy uh, so that industry's energy has uh, uh, has been has has uh, I would say uh, quite quite a lot of that has gone away and the TPA concept is a good one with this one. Uh, another one is uh, uh, the since the evaluation is happening through the TPA scheme and then the on the enroll program under specific QPs. Uh, the seriousness which is there with the apprentices and the uh, structured way the TPA uh, through that, the effectiveness is being analyzed. So that is working well. Uh, that's another benefit that the, the people are staying back. Uh, then I would say the industries which are getting uh, reasonably good, good time to SSO, earlier it used to be a scheme which was for a quite shorter time, one year. By the time the person comes in, uh, they they uh, get skilled and then they were ready to leave. So the assessment for three years is a, is quite reasonable time, and I uh, this should continue and this is helping us. And above all, I would say apart from the availability, the effective skilling, 
uh, the facilitation by TPA and the learnability of the people, there is a win-win for all because the industries are getting skilled people and people are also acquiring the skills without adding any technical qualifications to them. So that's that's the SRO experience, I would say. Right, that's great, sir. So overall experience hasn't showing towards the positive side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is definitely a positive side. And right, uh, we are also, um, we have in multiple units, we have it. And then we are also planning to ex extend it to the other units. Uh, that's really great. That's really great. So you're going to replicate it for the other plant locations as well. Right, yeah. Right. So as Dr. Rashita also mentioned about uh, the various courses that we have developed so far. Uh, so we are into picture from last nine years now, and we have developed a lot of courses for rubber and plastic. And just now we have now started working towards the chemical job rooms as well. So um, in the upskilling ecosystem for chemical sector, we are in the process of creating first of all the qualification paths. And once those qualification Plans are developed, then we create a course out of it. And this entire process, we are always ask or seek guidance from the industry experts by taking the requirements from them, what kind of courses we should develop. And that's how we are um, now initiating the concept for chemical as well. So we would like to apprise you that we have developed only six job rules so far, and uh, which are under approval. And uh, since you have got a rich experience in the chemical sector, so we would like you to uh, tell us, like, what is your opinion regarding these job roles? What should be developed? What is the high demand of job roles in the chemical industry? Since you are from the chemical industry background and you have got a rich experience into it. Uh, so I would say uh, the Pala, many things have been many aspects have been touched upon by uh, Mr. Sodi Selvam, and uh, he talked about in elaborate terms about the entire spectrum which is there available. Uh, so I would uh, share that there there are specific job roles based on our industry experience, and uh, I I would uh, I would like to project uh, uh, one one list on that. Sure. I'll, I'll share my screen. Definitely. So I hope my screen is visible. Sir, it is not yet visible. Yeah, it has come. Yes, we can see. So, uh, I, I, okay, so these are the job roles. Uh, this is a summary of job roles, what we are having. So when we talk about the, uh, in the chemical units industries, the production is one uh, aspect where the pro production process control is there. So there are various uh, job roles are there specific to the, the type of uh, in, uh, chemical unit or type of the processes which we are uh, carrying out. So the first one is the production uh, process control. Second one is all the all the machines or the plants are connected through DCS or the controls are happening to the distributed control system. So DCS operations is one area where all connecting all the things and then the decision making is happening from there, the analysis and decision making. So this is one area. Uh, then the maintenance, uh, uh, Mr. Selvam also talked about the maintenance. It is a very specialized kind of maintenance is there. So our experience is the plants which are uh, having, which require very specific materials of uh, construction for uh, process equipments. And uh, most, most of the times the materials are corrosive in nature. So maintenance uh, has to be of a, a very different grade uh, altogether. And this is one specific area. It can be broken down into various kinds of equipment, various types of like uh, the, the lower kind of things will take one side, the reactor kind of things will, will another side, uh, the heat exchangers and all. So these are the specific areas where the, the maintenance uh, and those part can be taken care of. And this also includes the preventive as well as the predictive maintenance. Uh, then the safety, safety itself, um, uh, as, as it is usually said that in chemical plant, everybody is a safety manager. 
so this safety is uh, i would say for each of the role the what are the safety aspects and also assisting the safety of uh, process equipments uh, then the personal safety the building material safety and safety against all calamities which can take place so these are all aspects can be included here uh, then the another area is the quality assurance or control so so the quality control specifically involves related to the testing and and the in the part of uh, uh, conform confirmation on the conformance the quality assurance is how the uh, activities are being carried out how the parameters are monitored how the process control is happening what decisions are taken and how it is taken on that so that assurance part is is one of the uh, critical job role uh, then the technical services and r and d so these require specific uh, skill sets uh, then design and projects uh, these are the areas where uh, the uh, brownfield expansions and many of the companies are trying out uh, these things that designer and projects are integral part of the uh, current operations so this is also one of the area and last but not the least is the data analysis which is the dcs new technologies all the connected machines iots ai uh, decision making by by the the algorithms so this is one area where the support can be from the process side decision making as well as from the uh, the instrumentation part of that how in integ integration can be done so if i talk about all these job roles the the current which are uh, the key areas uh, as you asked about which are the higher uh, high demand areas or high focus areas can be are the process control dcs operations quality assurance and data analysis so these are the key based on the customer and industry specific requirements that's really nice sir so we can map these with our qualification packs and we can have a detailed discussion around this with the content team and maybe the technical team of your department that that's really great also sir we would like to know from you what is the requirement of industry in terms of skill set to perform the job in the chemical industry so as in you are hiring someone the kind of skill set you are looking for what are the challenges that the industry faces while hiring and training them during the onboarding process yeah. okay. i'd like to know the domains in which the challenges are highest which domain the challenges are more and this will allow us to focus more on the critical areas for developing the courses and initiating the trainings okay so uh, uh, i would uh, once again share my screen yes so uh so so there are uh, i think there are various parts to this uh, uh, question i am not sure how to remove this uh, okay so the title is uh, i'm not able to remove this okay so the need of the, chemical industry yeah need of uh, okay uh, so need of uh, chemical industry is if i go somewhat uh, uh, backwards going to the background so uh, as uh, uh, selvam sir also touched upon this that india is is having a lot of potential the only 3% of chemical sales is happening or manufacturing is happening from india so india is now becoming a, and we are seeing for sure that it is going to become a manufacturing hub and uh, here uh, the entire industry is expanding fast on scale and and, and spectrum uh then there is another background is that there are high employee turnover uh, when we talk about the industry requirements and because many of the companies are expanding so the, the requirement is increasing like anything uh then the much needed experience which are required for various job roles is becoming scarce because the the even the operating people are aging so we need to create more people who are joining the system uh, so this is the background requirement for uh, how it can it can go to a very high kind of requirement and what industry typically needs is uh, they of course they need the industry ready skilled personnel right from beginning then the youngsters can be made competent through education and training so how what can be done uh, prior to they go to the uh, the chemical industry and what chemical industries can offer as a part of training uh, then the third one is uh, the quick onboarding that is the requirement of the industries because they they want to have a quickly a person should come and then start uh, uh, getting skilled and uh, start contributing so these are the basic uh, uh, needs and the skill sets which are required are uh, if 
if we bifurcate into two of the areas, uh, so the hard skills and soft skills. So in hard skills, uh, I would say the continuous processes are invariably in all the chemical industries. We find uh, the process is continuous. So they should know about the equipment functionality and the process application. So apart from getting knowledge about the process, how it functions or what, what is the process flow, how the equipments are functioning and how it is its repercussion if something goes bad in the entire process application. So this is one area the, the skilling should be in covering this part. And most of the equipment, when, when a person joins in it, the plant which is running, so it, it seems like a black box and nobody is able to find out what is going inside. So only the thing which is visible is during shutdowns or breakdowns. So the equipment criticality and safety aspects which are related to the process equipment, that also should be a part of the, uh, the, the knowledge part of the skills which we are imparting. Uh, then the next one is the chemical units often handle hazardous materials and any mistakes uh, can lead to catastrophic things. So safety consideration has to be there. There are large number of chemicals with different kinds of uh, properties and different kinds of reactivities. So handling multi multiplicity, that is also a requirement. Then uh, coming to the machines which are connected, the, all, the, mm, all the machines are connected to uh, wirings. And then those are coming into inputs into the computers and some kind of digital technologies, which are part of that decision making. So like this DCS and all. So these also are the areas that uh, uh, the skilling should be done in the areas of that. People should not be afraid of operating on the uh, operating chemical industries using the technology. So this also should be a part of uh, hard skills. And apart from that, analytical problem solving and Six Sigma, the improvements, the the variation reduction kind of things, which are the requirements. Uh, so these are the hard skill sets which are needed. And coming to soft skills, uh, the observation skills, a person how it can, uh, can, should be able to observe and relate. The customer orientation part, the logical thinking part, how to connect all the dots coming from the various parts of the plant, agility, uh, and then team working. So these are the soft skill requirements are there. So uh, uh, if we break it into the, the challenges which are there in front of uh, when a new person comes and, and joins on the, the, in the onboarding as you asked about. So knowledge on chemical side, knowledge on control systems, computer side. So these are uh, the, the challenges we face and understanding of data from instruments, the process trends and the decision making which is happening based on them. So these are the challenges once a person comes uh, uh, that we face in the onboarding. Knowledge on safety and regulatory kind of requirements, handling of emergency situations, analyzing data, predicting process, predicting when is the predictive maintenance requirements. Uh, so these are the challenges which are there. And one more thing which is which should not be ignored is the culture fit from uh, a person coming from one organization to the another. So like the thing which is not seen as a reality there, and it takes the highest priority in, in the industry when the person is going to work. So this culture fit has to be there. So these are the some of the uh, uh, aspects in onboarding. Yeah. And um, if I share, important. Yeah. yeah. And if I share one of the examples, so how the training process goes on, uh, so SRF in SRF, we are having a system of uh, training and certification of all employees, whether it, it, is, it is coming for a, uh, these supervisory level or process associate level or engineer level. So the, the person's fitness governs them to be sent to the classroom training and our post classroom training, the tests are uh, happening. And then we are, uh, before putting them into the uh, practical training, we are taking them through the entire modules of uh, training, which are classroom. I'm sharing one example. Uh, so one of the examples of classroom training is uh, we have made a learning center where training is done through the displays of cut sections of different parts of equipment. And this actually imparts that the control walls, gauges, uh, cables, various models of blowers, compressors. So the cut sections are there so that the functionality is also understood by the person. So this is one kind of training module, which is used for onboarding. Even with those, uh, we still, I still feel 
that the the major challenges which are there are in the production and process control for the continuous processes uh, the dcs operations and the process pro prediction being proactive in diagnosing the problems carrying out the predictive maintenance although there are tools but the the human decision making also has to happen the, that requires some kind of skill uh, safety technical and design team which are which have to ensure the quality of design and change control and how to absorb or make use of new technologies which are coming in form of ai machine learning uh, data science for modeling forecasting how to leverage and make our products better and our processes better so that the overall outcome for the industry is coming as a uh, which is being competitive with the global uh, uh, requirements right so uh, that's a lot of technicalities that you have explained it very well and uh, is there any minimum eligibility also as far as education is concerned uh, yes so there are there are different levels uh, which are specifically if we talk about the design uh, kind of thing or technology side uh, those things are to be uh, uh, are governed purely by the people who are of, uh, the who are the, the the degree engineers and the other roles like the plant operations dcs operations and uh, certain decision making uh, normally those are the uh, diploma engineers who are there and the plant operations part which is the field operations and uh, the uh, those those can be done by the people who are having some kind of training post their uh, 10th or 12th, 12th graduate okay that's really great so uh, personally i'm just asking do you see any kind of a changes when the person on boards and post completion of this initial inception program or training module and do you see the people are transforming and taking the you know concept of industries how to yeah. work how to behave basic yes uh, they, there are there are definitely there are uh, changes are there because the outside world when when a uh, when the entire population who's working outside so there is uh, the safeties are not the uh, okay i would not say that but but the safeties and certain things take back seat when it comes to the workforce the entire workforce who's working for us one purpose one cause so they come together and with the uh, the team which is having all the responsibilities laid down or uh, distributed across the team so there is a very different response which is coming so we we say like like a person when he comes out uh, driving a two wheeler to the industry uh, once the person enters has to wear all the pp's Uh, has to wear the helmet and that's a very different culture when we see the same person who's who's uh, uh, behaving outside uh, the industry and inside the industry so there is a right. behavioral change there is also a change uh, 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 when they are working in the industry environment right so it's not only technical trainings also the soft skill trainings and uh, you know personal development of the candidate happens when they join the organization as a yes very true yeah right great so uh, thank you so much for giving us this insight within the industries in the chemical industries for them and um, there is one question that is being asked in the q and a tab do it is a generic kind of wherein uh, reach law pinlar provides chemical regulatory trainings to meet the industry skill demand due to rapid changes in the chemical regulations due to european reach organizations in india would require these skills to handle the regulatory compliances how can we contribute to skill india initiative of government of india by developing a customized regulatory courses for indian chemical sector so i guess uh, uh, mr sudhi sir yeah. this is you see we um, in fact uh, it's very it's coincidence that you know we are now uh, uh, starting a series of webinars on uh, chemical regulations we have joined hands with uh, global product compliance we are going to you know i think there's up to august uh, i think six uh, seminars are there on product compliance as far as india is concerned uh, we are in the process government is in the process of finalizing uh, regulation uh, for the chemical sector uh, which we are hoping to uh, see it very soon but as far as other countries are concerned 
they already have uh, very stringent regulations and uh, uh, definitely it can form part of the uh, model can be there on the chemical regulations definitely that will be useful for uh, uh, indigenous manufacturers plus importers and exporters also it's a good idea but what i'm saying is a coincidence i think is starting we are uh, joining hands uh, with uh, a big organization who are experts in this and uh, this is a free program i think uh, whoever has asked this question can attend this program also and they will be benefited right yeah uh, thank you so much sir and also i would like to add that uh, we do incorporate the regulation uh, related uh, information in the curriculum in the standards that we develop so uh, we have nossas national occupational standards within each stand, uh, within each qualification that we develop and within uh, the uh, nossas there will be nossas uh, covering the regulatory acts and compliances uh, which are fit for the indian industry so that will definitely be covered when we develop or design the curriculum for the chemical sector uh, and under the guidance of uh, sothi sir and other chemical industry experts all right thank you dr rashita uh, thank you mr sothi for the answer and uh, other participants also if you have any questions you can write in the q and a tab and we request all the speakers to answer through email or through this webinar and for those who have missed out the session today they can also watch the live session on our social media platforms others who are connected they can follow us on our social media platform to get the latest information regarding the skill based programs and scheme the link for the social media platforms i have pasted on the chat screen so you can like us you can follow us on for all the updates on the sector skill council and skilling programs so looking forward to end the session i would like to invite dr ashita to give the vote of thanks to our speakers eminent speakers and participants thank you so much deepmala uh, i would like to thank uh, mr sothi selvam uh, and mr ajay chaube uh, we are immensely grateful uh, for your uh, support and for your acceptance of uh, taking this uh, webinar and becoming our keynote speaker it was really uh, valuable suggestions and inputs given by both of you uh, sothi sir i am really grateful that you you know agreed to be a speaker and you have shared valuable inputs towards this uh, webinar we will be we have taken note of it and we will definitely get in touch and work closely under your guidance and support to develop more content and uh, you know take this skill, skilling initiative within the chemical sector very aggressively and uh, to reach out to every industry and help that how we can contribute and we can help the industry and support the industry towards getting the skilled manpower uh, and bridging the gap and uh, we have noted down all the inputs given by you and will definitely uh, look forward to many more suggestions and inputs thank you so very much for your time and for your you know valuable inputs uh to mr rajay chobe also i would like to uh, you know thank him uh, thanks thank you for the valuable inputs i have make a, uh, made a note of uh, the suggestions that you have given you have identified the uh, key areas also of uh, you know the uh, departments maybe i, I can say in that way that the, the departments those the areas where we can develop uh, more qualifications and uh, uh, also the uh, you know uh, the domain and the generic uh, skill is what we call it so when we define a standard when we define a qualification pack we have nossas of two types domain nos and generic nos domain nos covers the functional aspect of the job role and the generic nos covers the soft skill which you have mentioned so you you have mentioned it as hard skill and soft skill so i have made a note of it and uh, we'll definitely work closely with you under your guidance also we'll need your input so this is how we design and develop our uh, content and curriculum we take inputs from all the industry experts because you 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 all have spent so many years in the industry so you have that rich expertise of the industry the nuances the integrities of the industry that you you have uh, will help us you know design the curriculum in a way that is beneficial for the uh, uh, trainees that aspire to come and contribute towards the industry and also for the employers for the industry who ultimately gain benefit out of having skilled manpower which becomes productive you know in very less uh consumption of time and resources in the onboarding process so this is the our, our uh, whole sole objective and i'm very very happy and grateful to both of you for taking out time and uh, you know giving your valuable inputs we'll definitely work closely under your guidance and 
uh, we have already as uh, uh, sir suggested both of you have suggested that we should get inputs from the industry experts and i have also included in my presentation that we do that we already have a pool of experts with us but uh, yes it's it's chemical industry is a vast industry we need more experts uh, to rope in and to contribute towards uh, the development of content and that we we'll, that is an ongoing process so we'll continue to do that we'll continue to work under your guidance and uh, again once again i would like to thank you and i would also like to thank all the participants who have taken out time and attended the session for us i hope it was uh, uh, helpful and beneficial for all of you uh, we are available on all the social media platforms and the links are given over there you can uh, drop in uh, your queries your requests your concerns to our uh, you know handles you can write in to us on our email ids also we'll be happy to help you uh, and help the industry in taking this initiative you know at a much greater heights so uh, thank you deepmala for uh, moderating the session so well and uh, we look forward to conduct many more sessions uh, with many more experts and of course to have you both also on board with us so thank you once again thank you everyone have a wonderful evening and uh, yeah thank you Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashok. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Sudhi. Thank you, Mr. Rajay. Thank you.